This is just wonderful to be here today. Uh, it's a real privilege uh, to be opening this conference, uh, and it's a privilege for me to be Scotland's Commissioner for Children and Young People. And as I speak today, and the topic, and the way that I try and link the, I've been asked to link the voices of children and young people to what's in the framework. And quite honestly, it's really easy. And that's one of the really heartening things about the way the framework's been put together. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my role because I think that's relevant in terms of what the framework is actually trying to do. I, I speak to thousands of children and young people in school settings, in uh, social care settings, in youth settings, explaining to them that as a country, we have signed up to the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. And what that means is that we are obligated to do the very best by our children and young people. And the way that I often summarise that to children and young people is to say that my role is about improving the lives of children and young people across Scotland. And that's your role as well. And one of the challenges in that is how do we know if we are actually improving the lives of children and young people across Scotland? And I think one of the ways that we will know is if, they, if we follow the framework, if we manage to achieve the ambition of the mental health indicators, we will start to have a, develop a better understanding of how well we are actually doing by our children and young people. So that's why it's so, such a powerful uh, document, it's such a powerful framework, because every person here should be able to locate their work within the framework, to be able to locate their contribution to improving the lives of children and young people in Scotland within the framework that you've just uh, been handed out. And I'm going to give you some examples from my work about the close resonance of the way that we've approached our work in the Commissioner's Office, or I've approached the work as Commissioner, with the framework. And just as a start, one of the calls that has come through from the child, health, child mental health indicators <coughs> is to have a measure of how well children feel that their rights are being respected. And the people who put together the framework have been brave enough not just to look at the measures that we already use, of which there are numerous, but to actually say, and there are things that are important to children and young people that we have to develop. So I give a hearty welcome to that call of developing a measure of how well children feel that their rights have been respected. And in doing, in, in, in executing my own work, I've been saying to children and young people, I want you, you as children and young people, to direct the work that I'm involved in. And to do that, we were trying to give life to Article 12, which is a child's right to have an opinion, to express that opinion, and for that opinion to be given due weight. So over the last two years, we have conducted an exercise which we called a right blether. A right blether which was a very significant national consultation on what my priorities should be over the next four, five years. In fact, what that was doing was trying to bring life to children being able to direct, to have a real influence on the work that I do. And in fact, within the framework, you'll find that there's a, a call for a measure on a sense of agency. How well do children and young people feel, or how much to the extent do young people feel that they can exert influence on the world around them? So I'm very pleased that that's also in the document. And the way we went about a right blether was to say that we were interested in four areas. The first of those areas was in the home. The second was where they learn, the learning environment, as you'll see in your document there. The third was in the community, and the fourth was Scotland. Now, these are the areas that we went to in terms of a right blether. And if you look at the document, you'll find that those four domains are four of the five that are contained in the document. The additional one is individual measures. And we weren't looking at individual experiences of children and young people. That's really strongly reaffirming of the approach that we took towards a right blether. And that means when I come here today to tell you the messages that children and young people give in those four domains, because that's the only, one, the only ones I can report on, that you'll be able to see the strong link between 
the measures, the calls, the, the, the data sets that are already existing, and the voices of children and young people. So in the first of those, in the home, what children and young people told us said they wanted to be helped to be safe and secure. Safe and secure. Sorry, I should add that the number of children and young people who took part in the right blether was 74,059. That makes it the biggest consultation ever undertaken in Scotland. So we're not talking about a small survey, we're talking about something that touched every single local authority area, local health board area in Scotland. We're talking about some, an exercise that had really big numbers, really big responses to it. So in the home, children told us that they wanted to be safe and secure. My take on that, my response, and we have to give an interpretation because we were having to ask uh, big questions which need to be narrowed down in terms of how do we respond to it. My response to it is that this is about the prevention of abuse and neglect for children and young people. And indeed, the area I'm going to home in on is domestic abuse. Now, if I had longer, I would take you through the reasoning and how we got to domestic abuse. But you'll find in the document here, one of the areas which we need to develop is a better understanding of the numbers of children that are living with domestic abuse. And yet again, another big tick to the fact that this framework won't just pull together knowledge and understanding we have as children, but it will actually add and it will make progress, or we should make progress in the kind of data sets that we are collecting routinely on children and young people. When we asked children about where they learn, most often that was about the school environment, but it was also about uh, youth, uh, youth club environments as well. They came back to us and they said, we want the same chances, no matter how much money our families have. Now, there's a big issue in there about poverty, and I'll say a little bit about that later. But that, for me, is the link between children with, in poor circumstances, stressed out circumstances, and educational attainment. But I'm not interested in producing another report that tells us that children from poor, stressed out circumstances do not attain well at school. And in fact, we're looking at what that agenda might look like. But one of the key things that has come out of the discussions that we've had so far with the directors of education across the country has been, this is not just about educational attainment. This is about achievement. This is about how we celebrate the rounded individuals, the rounded young people that we produce into here, or that we assist into adulthood. And indeed, again, in your framework, there is a call for a measure which is looking at how well children think the schools respond to their whole uh, achievement rather than just educational attainment. I'm paraphrasing just now, but essentially there is uh, an, an, an acknowledgement that we shouldn't just measure our children by how well they do in terms of academic achievement. There are so many other areas of achievement for children and young people. So I really welcome that in the document. And there's a resonance there with the voices of children and young people through a right blether. The third area that we looked at was in the community. And in the community, children and young people said, we want to feel safe and respected. That word safe again. Safe is a really big word for children and young people. I'm going to go down the route of respected because time and again, when I was engaging with children and young people, they said that they felt judged that they felt stereotyped, that they felt on occasions demonised. They felt that they were viewed through the prism of the last negative press report on children and young people. So I'm going to home in on respect. And in fact, there's a campaign in there about, and we're looking at the, what might be the topic uh, of that campaign. But to relate it back to the framework, the framework has got two measures in it that it's calling for, which is about uh, whether children and young people feel that adults value them or not, and also whether they feel stigmatised or not. This is exactly the territory that, for me, is relevant to children and young people. So yet again, the framework, as, as it is just now, is pushing us in the right direction, in the direction that are con of concern to children and young people. And the fourth area that we looked at was Scotland. And what children and young people told us from that was that they wanted to be included, no matter how different we all are. 
My interpretation on that initially is to look at some of the most excluded groups. Children with disabilities, for instance, who are three times more likely to live in poverty, more than three times likely to suffer abuse. So we're developing a work stream around that. But children and young people come back and said, yeah, but it's not all about disability. There are lots and lots of children who are not included. And so we're developing different ways of working with different groups of young people. We've already done something with young carers, and there's a whole list of children and young people that uh, don't experience the same inclusion as others. Link that back to the framework, and you've got a measure in there, a call for a measure of the extent of discrimination that children and young people feel they experience as they go through their childhood. So for me, there is a really strong resonance, not only with the framework in terms of the domains, but also in terms of some of the detail there, some of the identification, some of the bravery of the people who were involved in it to say that there are measures which we need to be able to assess how well we're doing by our children and young people that we haven't quite got yet. And that, for me, is a really powerful message that comes through the framework, not least to complement all of the other uh, massive amounts of information that we collect on children and young people. And there's two other aspects that I want to mention on this, because these are overarching issues. Uh, and the first of those, as I mentioned earlier, poverty. Poverty, unless we, unless we in Scotland structurally reduce the gap between the haves and the have-nots, then we will continue to produce children who have got le lesser life chances than their peers. We will continue to have to plough time, energy, resources to try and compensate for those negative experiences of those children who are living in poverty. And so we've got plenty of information about poverty indices, and they are rightly in the framework. And the other overarching issue for me is early years. The importance of early years, the importance of us listening to the evidence and really being assertive about doing something about our early years services, our early years support. And that's from, from pregnancy, particularly through the first three years of life, but and beyond. And to their credit, again, the framework is identifying a number of indices, a number of measures which we need to look at in terms of how well are we actually doing by our children and young people in those earliest of years. So I hope I haven't stolen any of the thunder of uh, Jane, <laughs> but I, was, I, I could talk for ages, really, about the, uh, uh, the links, the links that I can see in my own work in the framework, and the links that I think you and every member of this audience will be able to see in their work in terms of the framework. And one of the things that I want to summarise, if you like, is if you look at the messages that children and young people give us, or have given from a right blether, they're looking for a Scotland that is safe. They're looking for a Scotland that is fair. They're looking for a Scotland that is respectful to them. And they're looking for a Scotland that is inclusive. And this audience doesn't need any telling about the importance of those really big messages, those really important aspects of a child's life that contribute towards their mental health and mental well-being. And in fact, these, for me, are reflected in the framework as it stands. The framework which, in my view, is a world leader in terms of our understanding of children in Scotland. And I think we should be proud not only of the production of the framework, but also the challenge that it presents us in terms of the new information that we have to gather, the new information that we are challenged with collecting so that we can get a better insight to our children and young people, so that we can get a better insight to how well we are reaching that ambition of improving the lives of children and young people in Scotland. Thank you.